Hi, I'm Paul Wilson, creator of The Body Swing and the director of the Paul Wilson Golf School at Bears Best Las Vegas. Here's a great tip to help you widen your swing arc. Widen the arc, you get more power. If you like this tip, give me a thumbs up, then click on the red button to subscribe to my channel. Click on the bell so you're notified when I post new tips, and please tell all your friends about my tips. You know, there's a lot of other people out there that need help too. Here's a great tip to help you widen your swing arc as you're swinging your golf club. So if you don't know, you wanna try and create the widest arc possible. A wider swing arc gives you more club head speed. It's gonna help you compress your irons and hit those nice solid drives on the correct trajectory. All right, so a lot of people, you know, when they set up to the ball, a lot of times they have their elbows bent. Some people go back and bend their arms a lot of people do a chicken wing through impact. So if you do a chicken wing, you can see that your arms are buckling here. And then into the through swing, they become buckled over here. So that, of course, is not the widest arc that you could possibly hit. So the widest arc is going to be the length of your arms. Okay, so body, arms are stretched out. Well, that's the widest arc you can get, okay? So we want to try and replicate that when we swing the golf club. So a great mental image for this is to think of a bicycle wheel. All right, your body is like the hub or the center of the bicycle wheel, and these are the spokes. So if the spokes are this long, you need at least one spoke that long throughout your swing to maintain the wheel. Okay, so if you buckle your arms, doing a chicken wing or just not in position throughout your swing, your wheel is collapsing. So that's getting narrower. We need the arc to get wider. So then we get that nice compressed sound and trajectory on our driver, okay? So have this mental image as you do a few practice swings, okay? So think about it for a second. If you were the, you got the wheel here, okay? You're the hub in the middle and you've predetermined the length of the spokes are as long as your lead arm right here. Okay, so you've got your arms stretched out like this. Now, as we go to three quarters back, the lead arm is fully extended. Back arm is folding. From here, as we come down, the lead arm is still extended, extended, extended. We get to about two feet after contact. Now both arms extend. Then from there, your back arm is going to extend, creating the spoke on the wheel on this side, because your lead arm is bending at this point. All right, so hopefully you kind of see that. So from right here, if I was just doing little three quarter swings, at every moment there, at least one arm is extended as I'm swinging that back and forth. So you could literally have that image in your mind Okay, if you were the hub, here's the spokes, okay? Spokes on the wheel, the wheel's over here, you know? That wide, right there, okay? Spokes, spokes, okay, now it switches over. Now it's extended on that side. Okay, so that would be a great image to have. Now, why I'm saying three quarters to three quarters? Because I am okay with the lead arm bending a little bit. So right here, after the three quarter back point. So my arm is straight at this point. I go to the top. I have always bent my arm a little bit as I go back. And there are tons of pros that bend their arm. There's some that keep it straight, okay? So I'm okay with it bending. It just keeps me nice and relaxed. So I'm not trying to, you know, hit it hard with my arms. The key piece is, do I get it back to straight by the time I hit the ball? And yes, I do. And then both arms are extended after I've hit the ball, back arms extended on the way through. All right, and then actually after you hit the through point at three quarters through, both arms would then bend into your follow through on that side. Okay, so like I said, this is just a real simple image you can be doing to start widening your arc. Okay, like everybody knows what a wheel looks like, a bicycle wheel. So just start to have that image as you're swinging a golf club, just to get that concept of, you know, the spokes not narrowing. Now, keep in mind, when you do any kind of swing change, 
there are flaws associated with the change. So you have to be aware of those flaws. Because if you're not aware of the flaws, you're going to hit this flaw, I'll explain it in a second, and then you're going to think that's a bad thing, when really that's a good thing. That's telling you that you're making the change. All right, so in this case, if you have been hitting a golf ball like this, let's say you set up to it, you go into the backswing, you come down, you do a chicken wing here. The arc is narrowing. So if the arc was narrowing, your body's going to have to dip down to make half decent contact with the ball. Okay, so you're going down like this to make up for the bend in the elbow. Now, what would happen if you stretched the arm out? Well, you'd probably hit some fat shots, wouldn't you? Because that's a wider arc you're putting in your old golf swing. So if you don't know that, what are you going to do? As soon as you hit a fat shot, you're going to go right back to your other swing. And now you're not going to make the change because you're seeing these fat shots. And that is one of the key moments in time that people, you know, they don't know that. So then they never follow through and make the change that they're trying to make because they don't realize there is a flaw associated with the change they're making. So I'm telling you right now, if you have been narrowing your arc, you put a wider arc in that golf swing, you will hit the ground behind the ball sometimes. So how do we fix the fat shots? Real easy. All you have to do is get the weight off your back foot when you come through. Okay, think about it. If you're trying to widen the arc, you're really just kind of thinking about your arms. You're not even firing your body, you know, to any degree. So of course, sometimes you're gonna go like this and just hit the ground behind the ball. Okay, once we start firing our body, that will clear the new wider arc and then you won't hit the ball fat. All right, so how do we get the weight moving or you start using our body? Well, right here, as we get to the, into the back swing, we're gonna feel this heel right here. We're gonna feel it start lifting as we're coming through impact. So if we lift the heel back here through impact, I'm hoping that the weight is going to be shifting. If you shift to the forward foot, there's no way you're gonna be hanging back hitting the ground behind the ball. All right, so simple mental image. You got a bicycle wheel. Everybody knows what that looks like. Your body is the center or the hub. These are the spokes. Okay, so you stretch your lead arm out in the beginning. So don't set up with your elbow bent. Okay, because you're not predetermining the length of the spoke. So you set up with the lead arm bent or uh, straight like this. Let me just do a practice swing with it. So I go like this. Now that arm is going to be extended going back. This one's going to fold. You can just do a little three quarters. So lead arm is still straight. Okay. Both don't get straight again until about two feet after contact with irons, about three feet after with driver. Okay. So right here, we're going to stretch both arms out and then the back arm is going to stretch out. Okay. And then they both fold into the follow through. So you kind of think like that. Okay spokes spokes oh wide arc wide arc okay you get that feeling then of course i would just do some easy ones with a ball okay so right here just little easy swings just like that, to try and get used to the new feeling of a wider arc. Instead of sitting here, trying to hit it as hard as you can, doing a chicken wing because the muscles are contracting, getting that poor contact. Okay, so you start off kind of slow like that. I would be teeing the ball up. Just remember what I said. If you hit some fat shots, no big deal. That is what will happen sometimes because it's a wider arc in your old golf swing. So you got to fight through that, okay? Don't worry about it. All you got to do is get the body firing in a few minutes and then you'll, you won't hit it fat anymore. So you've hit a few just kind of easy. And then of course, we're going to try and do it a little bit harder. Okay, so I wouldn't even go up to top speed yet until you kind of have the feeling. So gradually work on it and start to stretch it out. Then 
hopefully if you keep doing it, it goes into your swing. We get rid of chicken wing, you know, that'd be great, wouldn't it? We start to widen our arc, which is gonna give us more club head speed. Get that nice compressed sound on our irons and get our ball flying on the perfect trajectory with our driver. All right, so those are the things you wanna look for, but you gotta keep doing it. Okay, this is a drill. So a drill sometimes takes a little bit of time. Give it a few practice sessions, widen the arc, and then you're gonna see some amazing shots. I truly hope you've enjoyed this tip. You know, I've been teaching a powerful, effortless, pain-free golf swing now since 1991. If you'd like to learn this type of swing, then head on over to bodyswing.com slash free samples, click the link up here or in the description below, and I'll send you some free samples of my body swing book and video series that take you step by step by step through how to build a powerful, effortless, pain-free golf swing. So once again, head on over to bodyswing.com slash free samples, click the link up here or in the description below, and I'll send you the free samples right away.